Carter. I don't think I introduced myself. I know a lot of you. Um, and it's wonderful to, to see so many friends and family, colleagues uh, from all phases of my life. Um, my dad is artist Robert Carter. And I've gotten a lot of questions about why did you decide to do this? What was the impetus uh, for doing this event? And so I said, really, it didn't take much thought. It was pretty simple and straightforward. And the answer is right here. Um, these artists are truly legends. And what's funny is some people have said to me, well, you've got to clarify that they're living legends. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they are living legends. I felt it was necessary and the right time to elevate the visibility of these artists and celebrate, uh, celebrate their extraordinary talent that spans over 50 years. And this is the first time ever that they've been together at an art event in person. So it's, a, to me, a, a momentous occasion. I wanted to introduce Vanessa DeLuca, and she's the Editor-in-Chief of Essence. I'm going to turn it over to Vanessa, and she's going to introduce all of the artists. Thank you so much, Heather. Thank you. Good, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Oh, it's so great to see all of you. This is really exciting for me because um, I secretly love art. I'm not an artist, but my dad um, is, and if he had been able to stay in school, I think that would have been, if he'd been able to see that passion, he would have. So I have a special place in my heart for artists, and it's just my extreme honor and pleasure to be here with you guys tonight. My immediate right is Mr. Robert Carter. Next is Mr. James Denmark. <coughs> Next we have Mr. Paul Goodnight. And last, but certainly not least, we have Frank Frazier. Essentially, I think of art as a communication process. I need you as an audience. Without that, it's, it's a kind of a therapy program that just doesn't work for me. I'm going to cite two very quick incidents. Uh, years ago, when I was exhibiting in Dallas, and someone said, uh, Mr. Carter, there's a lady in the gallery somewhere crying. And I was concerned about that, and at a certain point I got to meet her, and she said, in, in so many words, you carried me back, you took me to a certain point. And I was very moved by what my images had done. On another occasion, I did a, a drawing many years ago called My Block, and there's a lady, uh, what I thought of as a block mayor, s sitting in a window. And one lady saw this picture drawing uh, uh, in, in an exhibit and said, that reminds me of my mother. And I knew that she had understood my point because she was Jewish. The figure in the, in the window was black, but she connected with the spirit. And that's the kind of inspiration that's very, very important to me. in the art world. Heather and, and Heather started doing shows with Bob since she was three years old. And Frank, I fell in love with him on the streets and Frank would really get down. And I would get down because I'm a native New Yorker and I would calm him and he became friends except he wakes me up early every morning. But anyway, Denmark introduced me to Bob. My aunt arranged a blind date and I keep telling Jim because I'm so happy he didn't introduce me. Bob told him, now that's the girl I'm gonna marry. And Heather, Holly, they were on the streets since they are little, doing shows, so they were exposed to the art world for many, many reasons. And we all fell in love with Paul's work. I love it, I just told the Paul, when Heather gets married, if I can afford a gift, I wanna buy a painting. <laughs> My inspiration, obviously, is uh, I had, when I was, when I came back from Vietnam, I couldn't talk. I had no real verbal skills at all because of the, tra the trauma of, of uh, Vietnam. And I saw a mural that somebody did with them as characters. And it said, Africa is the beginning. I looked at that 
and I said, that's what I want to do. That's going to be my voice. I don't want to just draw pretty pictures and stuff like that. I want to know what the content of art, what is it, what value does it have? What does it bring to folks and that kind of stuff? I realized then that this is, what I, is naturally what I'm supposed to do. But it came by accident. The only time I heard about art was either you had to starve to be a great artist or you were dead. <laughs> Those are the only two adjectives that I ever knew about artists. I said, that's why I want to do that. <laughs> but I mean, the calling, what comes natural, comes natural. And that's what you do. And I'm glad that I stayed with it. I'm glad I'm with these guys here. I think my inspiration started when I was a child. I grew up in a household of artists. And I was always encouraged to do my art. And then coming to New York to study, where I met Mr. Carter, uh, I was exposed to the living legends of the Harlem <coughs> Renaissance. They've all passed on now, but as Paul said, I was able to go to Roman Bearing's door and knock, and he would open it. I was able to talk to Jacob Lawrence and Ernie Crislow, you know, and uh, Norma Lewis. So seeing all of these people that I'd heard about, that I'd read about, it inspired me. Now that I'm older, the saying that as an artist gets older in age, he gets younger in creativity. Actually, I mean, it's really a simple question. I'm sitting with that inspiration, and that's the best way I can have it. Other artists make me do what I do, but the biggest thing is my children. When I walk in the door, Grandpa, you make some money? <laughs> <laughs> this is my inspiration. Those are my inspiration. But that all, other inspiration that I ain't gonna give you is when you write that check. <laughs> Leading artists in America that are living have made as much as $50 million for one piece of artwork. You can put us together in one room and not come to one million. So we, we, aren't, we aren't in that financial realm as a whole. There's no African-American artist I know in the world that comes close to that. Secondly, we're not a part of the publication world enough. There are people in colleges teaching art history that don't know Paul Goodnight or Denmark or Frank Frazier, and they should. They're not in the textbook. And thirdly, we're not in major collections, in, uh, many of us in major industrial collections, where, uh, I know there's some, but, but not nearly enough, and that's why Frank and I have often shared this term with Chitlin Circuit. We are very conscious of those kinds of limitations. Not the creative problem, but the responses from the outside world. This field of art has brought me all around the world. Uh, it's allowed me to see different countries, different people, different places, and that's just through being an artist. We hope that our value brings growth to some of the political problems that are going on in the streets today. That we able, are able to deal with them in a way that we can expose them to the rest of the world. So I think the real value of what we do is what we are ourselves. Many years ago, I would work and work, and I didn't have an idea of any kind that someday you would be able to Google James Denmark at auction and see that works that were created very early on are now valuable and is showing up in the states 
that's ending up in auction houses and people are better off for relating to the art as a collector and passing it on. For me, passing it on means getting up every day at 5 a.m. in the morning and getting the best out of myself even before I have a cup of coffee. What is your um, intention in terms of inspiring the ones who will come after you? The next generation, I would say that first of all, educate yourself. Work hard at knowing what you are all about. Look to the past, the greatness in art is there. Take that as a stepping stone and demand of yourself excellence. Then go forward and try to meet as many artists as you can meet and be honest about it and have someone as lucky as I was to have someone to say to you, you have no choice in the matter. You were born an artist, and you're going to die one.